CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. A 19-year-old Victoria man has learned a lesson about the police. It's not a good idea to run from them, especially when you have a canine unit on your tail. The man had fled from a vehicle during a routine traffic stop on Gorge Road East last night after police identified him as a drug dealer who appeared to be breaching a court order. The man ran into the woods along the Galloping Goose Trail, then jumped into the Gorge Waterway. That's where police dog Conan went to work. The dog sent in to track him down. Two officers waded into the water with the suspect fighting back. He was eventually wrestled to the shore, suffering dog bites. The man is now facing four new charges as a result of last night's incident. Unionized support staff at Vancouver Island University have now voted in favor of job action. There are 260 CUPE members who cast their ballots last night, and 86% are in favor of strike. Members could serve 72-hour strike notice as early as tonight. Thousands of VIU students are on edge. They say it's all too familiar to them. In the spring of last year, students were left in limbo for a month when the faculty shut down the university. QP support staff have been without a contract for two years. They're demanding higher wages and better benefits. Health Canada has now given the all clear to use the Novartis influenza vaccine, which was temporarily recalled after problems were found with it in Italy. The province uh, and Health Canada say the vaccine is safe, but the recall had little effect in B.C., where Novartis represents only about 30% of overall vaccine supply. However, now that it is approved for our use, the vaccination program in the province can return to 100% capacity. And the weather is making a mess here, too. Two days of non-stop heavy rains on the lower mainland have triggered two mudslides in Langley. The first slide came down this morning, washing out a road and forcing RCMP to close up to traffic. The same slide engulfed part of a home, but nobody was hurt. And then a second landslide was triggered just up the road. Crews are still monitoring that slide. The cleanup will not begin until the geotechnical team has completed an assessment to make sure it's safe for crews to go into the area without more mud and debris thundering down. And Astrid's standing by uh, at Fireman's Park in Oak Bay. There, we're just a few minutes away from the big bonfire, aren't we? We sure are, and we have made new friends here tonight. Uh, Griffin, you're four years old. Tell me about your costume. Who are you tonight? Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo. I love your costume. Is this the first time that you've uh, been to the bonfire? Can you point and tell me, <coughs> tell me how high up do you think those flames are going to go? If you point with your hand, how high will they go? way up to the sky like that? I think you're probably right. This gets underway in just a couple of minutes. Right at 6 o'clock, they're going to light this. What's your favorite thing about Halloween? You already said that. I said that to you when we were off camera. <laughs> Tell me again. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Halloween? Um, uh, getting candy. Getting candy, of course. Uh, earlier, you said you like knocking on doors, too. And that makes me have candy. That makes you have candy. Griffin, thank you so much. Uh, I know you have to go pick up Shaggy and Daphne and all the rest of the gang so that you can have a fun Halloween. Thanks for coming out. And uh, this is a great family event, Hudson. So uh, again, 6 o'clock is when the bonfire is lit. We will do that live for you uh, in just a couple of minutes. This event draws hundreds of people between 6 and 6.30 and then throughout the evening. So there are great snacks and all sorts of fun things to do here. Uh, again, come down to Fireman's. Park in Oak Bay. And they let it up uh, right at 6? Well, on my cue, I'm oh, told. Really? So that's that's how much pull I have. Okay. These guys are going to light. Oh, they're ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got busted for that pre-interview as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> See you in a few minutes, Astro. We'll check okay. back with you at 6. Okay. Uh, well, one more Halloween note before we wrap up this hour. The Spirit has taken over Gailey Farms in Saanich. Check it out if you haven't already. <laughs> Hundreds of people have wandered their way through the spectacular display. It's the 13th year that Rob Gailey and his family have been scaring locals, and this year they called in the big guns. And everyone who's been through will tell you it works. Um, a lot of UVic students this year, theater group students, and they're doing a, an amazing job. The, uh, the emotion that they have, the feelings they have, I mean, it's just fabulous this year. So how was it? Scary. <laughs> what, what was scary? <laughs> People coming out of the wall. I'm not sure if my pants are wet from the rain <laughs> or the pee. Wonderful, but it scared the crap out of us. <laughs> That's the idea. Tonight's the last chance you have to take in the Gailey Festival of Fear. It runs from 6 till 10 at the park uh, at the farm on Blankensop Road.
Travel expenses for British Columbia's MLAs have been released, and the biggest spenders are coming from the province's rural areas. The highest travel bill comes from NDP MLA Robin Austin, who spent more than $53,000 in travel to and from his Skeena riding. Not far behind him is Speaker Bill Beresoff at $46,000, and the New Democrats Norm MacDonald at $45,000. The top spender on Vancouver Island, Alberni Pacific Rim NDP MLA Scott Fraser. He spent more than $30,000. Liberal Ron Cantillon rang up just over $25,000 in travel bills. And Saanich and Democrat Lana Popham spent more than $20,000. Now, the NDP says that its travel expenses are justified because as opposition MLAs, they do more than represent their own constituents. They also travel the province in their role as government portfolio critics. I'm a Lower Island member of the legislature, so I don't have any out-of-pocket expenses for accommodation, for example. But if you come from the North Island, you come from the North Coast, you come from the interior, you need a place to live when you're in Victoria. So that pushes up expenses. Similarly, I have a critic area that involves going to the far corners of the province as energy critic. I go to Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, Terrace, Kitimat. Those flights are quite expensive. So. Back and forth to Vancouver can be very costly as well. I'm normally on the ferry, but you can't always take the ferry. Mid-Island MLA spent between fourteen and seventeen thousand dollars. Some South Island MLA spent just a few thousand each. Liberal MLAs who are in cabinet file most of their travel expenses in their position as minister, not MLA. So the NDP says today's numbers may seem artificially low for them. Also in the Nanaimo, a 25-year-old man has been arrested after a string of arsons in the harbor city. Ten dumpsters and garbage cans were set on fire in the Nanaimo within a five-week span starting in late September. RCMP say there was a man arrested for mischief last week after officers caught him throwing rocks at cars. Once in custody, police were able to connect him to four of the dumpster fires near the Woodgrove Center. RCMP are recommending to Crown that four counts of arson be laid. The man is due in court on December 4th. And a pair of brazen thieves is in custody tonight after an Anamo liquor store was badly damaged, then robbed. Mounties say two teens stole a truck, then plowed it into the front of the Chase River liquor store just after 11 o'clock last night. They ran off on foot, took some beer with them. An hour later, an officer and his police dog tracked the two men down in woods nearby. An 18-year-old and 19-year-old now face charges.